This is draft week. This truly is the dawning of a new era for the Chicago Bears. We have got brand new offensive coaching staff. We have an unbelievable infrastructure that we've never seen in this town to support said young quarterback. And he will be the guy getting drafted at number one on Thursday. No more do we have to listen to any of this nonsense, trade it for the hall and do this and do that. This deal you and I have been talking about for a long time. They had to do their due diligence on Caleb, but they were moving on from Justin since mid last season. Yeah, that was it. They were moving on. It was never a discussion point up there at Hallis Hall. They were getting a new quarterback. You know, I find it fascinating how people look at Caleb Williams are are co- uncomfortable with the unconventional. Mm-hmm. Uncomfortable with the unconventional, meaning that he's a young man that has got the world by the balls. He's the number one draft pick uh, in the National Football League. He's going to a world-class city like Chicago, and people want to delve into his personality or his perceived personality versus what he could do for the Chicago Bears. For me as a Bears fan, Cap, my whole issue is find players to make the team better so we can see them as a perennial playoff team and so I could see the Bears in the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl at least one more time in my lifetime. Because I saw it, and there's so many in our audience, Cap, that are so young, they don't even realize what it's like when the Chicago Bears are good on a regular basis, when they are the front page news, when they're winning, when they're winning playoff games or in the Super Bowl, when they win the Super Bowl. Cap, I lived this as a kid, as a young person. I saw the Bears once again get to the Super Bowl. It it was a year that I did not enjoy because there were so many people that had so much backlash on Rex Grossman, did not believe in this team, did not believe in our opportunity to beat the Colts. Yeah, they fell short, but it wasn't the same as 85. And so... I want for Caleb Williams, and I want for Ryan Poles, and I want for the Bears and Bears fans to be able to experience what you and I have experienced. Correct. Of how it's not, I mean, Cubs won the World Series, and yes, this city was on fire. White Sox win the World Series, and we've seen the Blackhawks win three Stanley Cups. Boy, when the Bears win, but win big and then get on top, it is amazing. Uh, The ride is absolutely amazing to see the Chicago Bears on top of the sports world. 1985 was a coronation in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. They went one loss, 15 and one, blah, 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 roll all the way, get to the Super Bowl, and just eviscerate the Patriots 46 to 10. I mean, it's never a game. Now, I want to see us have the Pat Mahomes, the Aaron Rodgers, that guy where you go, oh, God, we got to deal with this guy again. Yeah. And... I heard the afternoon show Waddle and Sylvie saying the other day, if he is who we think he is, 20 years from now, when you do the Mount Rushmore again of Chicago sports, he'd be number two. Michael will never be replaced, but he would be number two. But the pivot interview, which you can find on social media, it's Ryan Clark, Channing Crowder, and Fred Taylor. And they are sitting in Caleb's penthouse apartment in L.A. where you could see the stadium where they play, the Coliseum, right out the window. And he is open and honest and a hint of self-confidence that shines through that this, this is where I'm meant to be. This is what I've been working my entire life for. And they they brought up the painted nails and the this and the crying with your mom. And he answered all of it. It is football porn, man. It is unbelievable. And I kept saying to you, Hoodie, see that light down at the tunnel? It's getting a little brighter. It's a freaking train with a Bears logo. It's about to pull into the station on Thursday night. Let's give a sample of the pivot with uh, Caleb Williams speaking uh, about a lot of different topics, including the number one thing. How is he going to help the Bears? 85 Bears. One is through my care. One for football. One for my teammates. But also um, something that I've done myself is community-wise bringing the whole landscape together. Um, I did it. I did it at Gonzaga. Um, I've done it. I've done it uh, here at USC. I mean, 
we've sold out games here at USC, um, and that hasn't been done in a couple years. You know, bringing the fans back, bringing the, the love and joy. Um, one of the things that I get a lot um, is kind of the what we spoke about when I first sat down is I get a lot of, like, thank yous from USC fans yeah. and, and people around the city, not just at the games, but, I mean, I'll be a, I'll be a, I don't know, I'll be a honor bar and, 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 and you know, Bev Hills, and I get a, you know, a random thank you for doing this for USC. So bringing the community um, um, and showing my care for, for all three levels of, um, for myself, a ball, for my teammates, and then for the community that, that makes, I mean, that makes game days, the game, yep. everything, the city lively and, and fun and enjoyable and all of that. And that's that's kind of the three three things is, is care. Care is, care goes a long way. Places that, that love football, places that, that care about football, places that have the same, you know, goals and, and aspirations in mind. Thoughts there from Caleb Williams from the pivot. You know, um, I think it needs to be said that when you are playing for USC, it is a pressure cooker. You say, well, there's nothing more pressurizing the Chicago Bears. True, on the, on the football level for the NFL, and in the city, there's no doubt. But, Cap, when it comes to, to USC, you know, the Rams and the Chargers, they don't resonate, <clears throat> but they actually the pro team in Los Angeles is USC. Correct. And so you're thinking about all kind of reporters up and down Orange County that's asking all these questions about USC because he talks about how that place was sold out because he was the attraction. The offense was the attraction for USC. Clearly, if you take a look at the numbers, it had to be a reason to go. Correct. It kind of reminds you of arena league bat, uh, football, didn't it? Uh, but some of those crazy numbers that they put up offensively. But the point is, Cap, is that he had plenty of pressure. Now, it's different in the NFL, but, boy, the litmus test and whether that you can handle pressure, everyone asking, why'd you lose that game? Why'd you have that turnover? Why's your team underachieving? He got a lot of that with the L.A. media. He did, and that whole interview, I mean, I highly recommend just look up on social media The Pivot, and it is Ryan Clark's, I guess, video podcast YouTube show with Channing Crowder and with um, Fred Taylor. And it is, I mean, they get into every topic, every topic, and the, the painted nails to the crying to the mom to... I'm chasing one guy, 12. Were you a Commanders fan? You remember all this. You grew up a Commanders fan. How can you not trade him for the Hall to the Commanders? No, was not a Commanders fan. Aaron Rodgers fan. He said, so I rooted for Green Bay, but I did not follow him to the Jets. And he said, I don't have a team. I just want to win. That's all I care about. Just win. Whatever it takes. Sounds strange for Caleb Williams to be a Chicago Bear and grew up as a Commanders fan, but... My dad tried to raise me to be a Redskins fan is what I knew it as back then. Right. Uh, now, now, now Washington Commanders. I couldn't get into it. I don't have a team now. My team was, was Green Bay when Aaron Rodgers was there because of Aaron Rodgers. I'm a player guy and Aaron Rodgers is my guy, but uh, I couldn't oh. join the, the bandwagon. I'm still an Aaron Rodgers fan. He's still my guy, but... I couldn't join the bandwagon of becoming a Jets fan. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, so I'm still an Aaron Rodgers fan. Um, if he's playing for, for somebody, I'm, I mean, I'm a root for him and things like that. So uh, that's my answer to that. How about that? Right. It, and a lot of the analysts and draft experts have compared the way he plays. They said he's got some Mahomes with the creativity out of the pocket but he plays much more like Aaron Rodgers in the position. If he's as good as Aaron Rodgers, sign me the heck up. Well, Cap, it is a uh, there's a generation gap there. You get it. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has been in the game, what, around 20 years? Yep. I mean, so you can understand why a young man says the way that guy plays, the way he has his footwork, the way he seems calm at all times. Yeah, I can relate to that. And so... Caleb Williams looks at him kind of like how young NBA players look at LeBron in the league. Mm -hmm. Look at like, look at this whole this old learning tree that's been around for 20 years. Well, I grew up watching him. There's young people that grew up watching LeBron is playing against LeBron right now in the league. So I get that from Caleb Williams. I know. Listen, for the guy with the gnarled fingers that's there slamming down, you know, past blue ribbon, they're not going to be happy one after hearing that. It's like this guy was an Aaron Rodgers. 
hey, man, you got to be able to look at greatness and say, how can I get there? Aaron Rodgers is one of the great quarterbacks that we've ever seen. He just is. Correct. Look, look at the numbers. Look at the hammer that he's put down on the Bears for years and years and years. You can't deny his greatness. Now, as much as I dislike the idea that the Packers have been burying the Bears for such a long time, and now Jordan Love is carrying that mantle, apparently, uh, the point is, is that Aaron Rodgers has been great. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. He's an amazing football player, one of the five or six or seven greatest quarterbacks to ever play the sport. Because he tortured our favorite team. Sucked. Sucked. When he runs that end zone. I own you. I own you. Well, guess what? We may have a new owner rolling into town on Thursday night. Well, that's the hope. That's the hope. For 10 plus years, that is the hope. Because it's needed. I've seen great defenses before. I've seen great running backs before. Haven't seen a great quarterback. I'm checking off lists as I round the back nine in my life, Cap. I'm, I'm checking off the list of things that I've enjoyed and I've seen from my Chicago sports teams. Mm -hmm. The franchise quarterback, that you and I have not checked that off just as of yet. That's the only box. I saw the Bulls. Yeah. I mean, the greatest of all time right there. Uh, saw my Cubs win. Saw the White Sox win. Saw the Blackhawks win three. Saw the Sky win. I haven't ever seen a quarterback like this.